to Lady Barn Heritage Walks Audio Guides. Walking Tours of Distinction since 2016. You are now on St George's Road. This street was built in 1910 to house the workers of Lady Barn's doily industry. A rich deposit of lace doilies was found at the present site of number 29 in 1908. After the war, with a decline in stately homes, doily extraction ceased and in 1947 the last doily was sold to the British Museum for posterity. To protect passers-by from the enormous hole left by 37 years of excavation, the house at number 29 was erected. The house, although in every appearance like all the others on the street, this one is an empty shell occupied by the custodian of the doily hole, Mr Eugene Victor Hutchison who lives in the attic and pretends to have another job in town. Some say on quiet nights you can still hear random rhythmical bashings from within as Mr. Hutchison wrestles with both the buttressing stanchions of the pit and his own personal demons. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to cut you! Sell it to me! Sell it to me! Not the wig! <laughs> Wild and chaotic winds howl like demons through the alleyways of this godforsaken city. The eve of Christmas, and not one human sign of life. Giant inflatable sanders, casting unwanted shadows darkly looming over my feeble dog kennel, which is barely able to keep this draft out. Reaching me through this foreboding night are the unified hums, yelps, and howls of the disgruntled, disturbed, and neglected canine community. In this goddamn night, the canine condition lingers in the air. That time of year when strangers visit. That time of year when we get hoisted up out of warm abodes and tossed out into the yard kennel. Oh God, the yard kennel. This December air freezes my saliva, my earwax and paws, giving me fearful shivers down my tail, making my nose as useful to me as a frozen vegan elk antler. They named me Nigel, short for Nigello Augustus IV. I dislike this name with a vengeance. It's no name for a dog. Despite my weather-resistant coat, the constant existential questions that trouble my mind give me a chill so deep. Stop me sleeping, if you know what I mean. There's no comfort here. My spirit is cold. My wolf delights are now nullified. Most of this day got eaten up with chewing a discarded Christmas tree bauble like a deranged mad dog, limited in purpose, instinct driven. Chew, chew, chew this fucking bauble. If only I could reason why, why do I have to chew this fucking bauble? Smart as I am, my sense of humor in this concrete jungle is jaded, and yet my tender heart contemplates the future with a ferocious independent mind. Distant sounds of I wish it could be Christmas, terrorize my nervous system. During this night, I question over and over and over again what it is to be me. What it is to be... to be a Norwegian elk hound in this shithole of an existence. As the clouds hang oppressively low, reflecting the Christmas lights hanging from the town hall tree, a tree more familiar to me than anything else here. How does the tree feel? Far from its native forest, adorned in cheap plastic lights, nobody asked it. Welcome to my world. As Christmas Day looms closer, a dull orange blanket smothering the heavens and hides the stars. Oh, those stars. Those other worlds I've been passing through life. No closer to finding my purpose so far from, and with a deep yearning for home. What if I'm meant to be the first dog on Mars? What if I must make amends to the hundreds of moose my ancestors tracked and trapped? Am I a victim of my medieval ancestors? What if it is my purpose to unite all Norwegian elk hounds to take us all back home? Or bring uprooted Norwegian Christmas trees back too? Maybe I'm destined to be a tree -etarian. 
Oh, the weariness, as the shades of the evening draw on. Within view is my melancholy sense of yearning for the snow sledges. Not like sand or plastic ones in the park, no, the real deal. And I know not how to escape these insufferable deliberations that pervade my spirit. I say insufferable for the haunting feelings, half pleasurable, poetic, and sometimes exhilarating fantasies of being in high action, pulling sledges, hunting wolf. What evil lies in me to crave these things? The mind blocks out these thoughts to more neutral images of Christmas dog biscuits and bland city architecture draped in tinsel. I look upon the night that clings to me like flies to flypaper. Upon this bleak night, upon the vacant towers of the city, my thoughts turn to opium. I quickly shake that thought away. I quickly take comfort in those distant barks and yelps of dog stranger in the night. Oh yes, I must rest now and lick my own fur, eat my own shit and battle on. This sinking dreariness of thought can only be healed with. With what? As I lay back in my, oh God, Christmas decorated kennel alone, I wonder what if, well, perhaps Santa might bring me a mate. Perhaps a Christmas soulmate, so we can sniff each other's backsides and, well, set off back home to the Scandinavian landscapes and wild terrain where real Christmas trees are not just for Christmas. May the stars shine and guide our nights together. Amen. After all, tomorrow is another. Tomorrow <laughs> is Christmas Day. Another. This is at the window.com.